Today we're going to be taking a look at the Logitech Craft multi-device keyboard. This keyboard features a new innovative multi-function touch sensitive knob, but before we get too far ahead, first I'd like to go ahead and thank Logitech for providing the keyboard for review. Furthermore, we're also using another review unit currently inside our camera. That is an ADATA UHS-2 micro SD card, which should be published soon. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the craft. So you can see the craft is a rather thin keyboard here, actually slightly thinner than the laptop that I'm using to review it, my S1 Yoga. This is a mostly conventional layout, although you can clearly see on the command keys that this is intended for use with Macs first although it is OS aware thanks to Logitech's software. Craft is actually surprisingly heavy for its size due to the presence of a integrated lithium-ion battery. We have a USB Type-C port for charging and the device is environmentally aware. Um, you can tell when your hands are above the keyboard it has an ambient light sensor. Let's go ahead and take a look at the backlighting that's included with the craft. I'm going to go ahead and cut the studio lights here so that it's more obvious. And we're going to go ahead and turn that all the way up. As you can see here, the backlighting is even. The keys are illuminated inside the letters. Um, that's thanks to the process that they're manufactured with. And as you can see, the lighting died away. My hands go over the keyboard. The capacitive sensing actually can tell when there are hands present. Unfortunately, I'm going to bring the lights back on. Although the backlighting is still present there, you can't very well see it under studio lighting. Although this won't be the number published in the review since that will have been done under a more conductive scenario, we are going to go ahead and put the keyboard through a typing test here on video. That should give us a feel for the sound of the keys. Sixty seconds. I made a couple of errors. I think I missed some capital letters there. Overall, not bad. Not super loud. Shouldn't disturb anyone in an office environment. All right. I want to take a second and go ahead and highlight some of the additional functions that the craft has outside of the crown. We have this lovely block of three keys. These keys, clearly marked 1, 2, 3, actually allow the craft to be paired either via Bluetooth or one of Logitech's nano receivers to multiple devices. Currently, it's communicating with my laptop via Bluetooth. Uh, my laptop is 2. You can see it actually lights up when I select uh, one of the numbers. I can pair it to a desktop on a nano receiver. It's blinking because the nano receiver is not plugged in in addition to a third system. That makes the craft a lot more flexible in regards to what it's connected to. I can very easily move between two desktops or a desktop and a laptop or a PC and a tablet with a single input device. Logitech has several 
companion mice that feature similar functionality allowing you to have one mouse and keyboard for up to three devices. The only downside and as a Windows user uh, this is more jarring than being an Apple user is this block of keys here which includes the screenshot key and scroll lock has been moved over top of the number pad. That's not a huge problem for most people. You'll adjust to it re with relative ease, but for someone who works in IT, 99% of the keyboards that I work with have my screenshot key right where it belongs. I come home, come home to something like my Model M, and it is a muscle memory problem. In Photoshop right now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the functions of the crown inside the Adobe Suite. Photoshop is probably one of the more complete options in regards to what the crown is capable of doing. So let's go ahead and just open up uh, JPEG uh, from the keyboard's initial photo intake. So by default, we have some basic options you can see we've got one of the tools selected um, I have some options to adjust the brightness on the layer itself and I can control its blending with other layers 210 so brightness contrast saturation normal stuff so if I were to pick up something like the eyedropper tool not a whole ton that it does, although I can zoom in and out. See, that works rather smoothly. Grab something with a little more options. Uh, I've got the spot eraser here. I can control size and hardness. Uh, the brush tool, one of the more popular ones. Size, opacity, and flow. So grab the brush tool, uh, let's go ahead and make the size nice and obvious, and I can very quickly change that while I'm working. Not that any of that is what we would normally do. Same kind of thing, gradient tool, I can change opacity. Most of these tools I can change what would be considered their, their basic functions. Um, not getting too deep into anything weird, but I can very quickly save myself some clicking through menus and some mouse movement. I, I haven't had to, other than to grab the tool, go out on my workpiece. And if I'm working for a while with this blending edge tool or, or with the brush, I can keep changing between hardness, exposure, the tool size without going back. I don't have to keep going back to make changes that can very quickly save me some time. I do want to take a minute to touch on battery life. Um, this is something I'll go into a little more detail in the written review, uh, but if there is a single flaw that the craft has it is its battery life. Uh, I routinely see about six days of normal usage, which for me, and I imagine anyone who would be interested in such a keyboard, includes roughly between eight and ten hours a day of use. Um, that's not all inherently 100% typing, but the keyboard is being used for that duration uh, for writing articles, working in terminals, um, obviously games for anyone who uses a computer for entertainment as well. And as you've seen in some of our other reviews, we do include gaming benchmarks. Uh, that is not the kind of life I would expect for a keyboard in the price range of the craft. Um, at its 199 MSRP, I would expect a battery life in months. Um, it is convenient enough to recharge thanks to the inclusion of a USB Type-C port, the built-in lithium-ion battery. We're not continually eating double A's, 
but it seems that some of the functions, the capacitive sensing and the backlight uh, detract from the addition there. One other thing I'd like to note, and let's go ahead and flip the keyboard over, is the lack of any form of height adjustment. That is an unfortunate choice on Logitech's end. They believe that the keyboard is at the ideal angle, uh, coming from a much more inclined keyboard. Like I, I believe I mentioned that I routinely use a Model M. Uh, this is a jarring adjustment to say the least. People who are fans of Apple's keyboards won't find this half as troubling. However, for the craft, uh, or for the typical PC user, I should say, it, it is an adjustment, um, especially since even your $12 Amazon Basic keyboard typically has some kind of adjustment. 